with over a quarter of the season gone, we're comfortably mid-table. It's going to be an easy season, isn't it? Hello and welcome to Season 17, Episode 4 of Non-Leader Legend. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we're at home against Norwich and then away against Derby, both in the Premier League. Since you were last with me, we're doing well against the rubbish teams and badly against the good teams. It's exactly what you'd expect from a mid-table team. This is where we sit in the league. We're at 11th place. We've got a game in hand on everyone around us. 15 points after 11 games is a perfectly acceptable Return with a game in hand, we're seven points clear of the relegation zone and we're eight points away from the Champions League spots. We are about as mid-table as it's possible for a team to be. And a win today against our big local rivals Norwich in a massive game, the game in hand, Monday night football, would propel us up to eighth place and challenging for the European spots whilst also pushing Norwich down to some relegation trouble. So it's win-win all round for Ipswich fans if we have a good result today. We've had mixed results against Norwich in the past. We've done very well against them in the EFL Cup this year. They spanked us in the league last year, but we knocked them out in the FA Cup semi-final the year before. So this ongoing battle we've got with Norwich, it's kind of on all because we don't count the EFL Cup because nobody cares because we've had success with it against Norwich before and because it's a home game and because it's the big local derby we're going back to what we know in fact all of that aren't the only reasons we've also lost two very important players to play in the 4-3-3 or the 4-2-3-1 Carlos Pereira the only left winger we've got at the club is going to be out for three months with a broken foot and Leo Clement, the only out-and-out defensive midfield player we've got at the club, he's out for three weeks with a hernia. We do have options to play with Mark Foot out wide on the left or Gilbert out wide on the left when we need to. I don't really want to have to do that today. We're still struggling to get Stevie Alston to score goals. He has gone up to his £105,000 a week contract now. He's scoring goals for Scotland. I'm hoping that by putting a partner alongside him, he might start scoring goals for us as well. What better game to start scoring goals than the local derby? So this is our team for today. We've got Menzi in goal, a back four of Downey, Gabrielli, Borrelia and Martins, with Enzo, Arn and Park in midfield, Otterson in behind. Alston and Jordan Todd, who has three goals and three starts, so far better goal return than Alston, and there's a good argument that when it comes to playing with just one up front again, that Jordan Todd should be that one. However, obviously, he's not earning 100000 plus a week, so that's the argument for playing Alston all the time. Um, yes, we want this more than they do, because we're awesome. We're going to get... We're not going to get promoted this year. We're, all, we're so used to not being in the Premier League after 17 seasons that it's hard to remember. We can't get promoted anymore. We want to push on for those European qualification spots. If we can get to the halfway point of the season and be safely mid-table... There's no reason why we can't dream a little in the second half of the season, is there? Is there? We just, let's do this the, the, the Claudio Ranieri way. We just, all we want at the moment, we want to get to those 40 points. We want to get to survival as quickly as possible. If we get there before Christmas, then we'll worry about pushing on further. That was the most uneventful first half ever. We've not had a shot on target. It seems we've forgotten how to play our trademark all-out attacking 4-3-1-2. I mean... I might have forgotten how to get them to play it. This group of players have rarely ever played it, so they've not forgotten how to play it. They're just not really used to playing it, and perhaps we should have done a more attacking version of one of the two systems this lot are used to playing more often. But then we've got the whole don't have a winger thing. We have got a transfer window opening a month's time, but we have absolutely zero money to spend, and even less of a zero now that, now that Alston's wage has doubled, plus we've just lost. Who was it? Who even got sent off? Enzo. Ugh. I guess we just drop Otterson. But no, we've learnt from this before. We know what we're supposed to do when we get a player sent off. We're supposed to, <laughs> not necessarily exactly that. Um, some variation of it. We're going to do this ish. Um, should we make some substitutions or should we just do this for now we don't 
We don't want to be attacked. We're not attacking. That's fine. Um, really, we should. We don't have a left side. I mean, Mark Foot is in the nearest. We've got to a left-sided midfield player. Do we just play a flat three and then two up front? But we know what happens with width when we do that. Let's let's do that. Alston can sort of try and provide a little bit of width for us on that left hand side whilst not being so deep that he can oh, for goodness sake. Why do we always mess up the really big games? I think we've got a team full of bottlers. Um I really don't like the response tactically we've had to having a player sent off. It's always been the biggest difficulty with the four three one two. I never know what to do with it when we get a player sent off. When we're playing another tactic initially I generally know what to do. If it's a 4-2-3-1, we just take off the, the man in the hole. If it's a 4-3-3, we take off the holding midfield player. But this is just a, a shambles, and we're going to take Alston off. No, we're not. We're going to take... He's actually playing better than Todd. We're going to take Todd off. Gilbert, can you play in midfield? No. Oh, right, let's... We've got to go and try and win the game. So let's do that. And also, Martins has been rubbish, so we'll bring Mutcher on. And give it 10 minutes of that before we push and try and attack a little bit more, because we are losing. It is a local derby. We need to go and try and win this football match. artisan has been rubbish. Diaby is sat there on the bench. Why didn't we bring him on sooner? And um, let's go to control and try and find a way back into this game somehow. Hmm, we don't see... I mean, we've still not had a shot on target in the entire match. It's supposed to be the local derby, and we cannot muster a shot on target. That's that's just pathetic. We're on overload now. Is there a way to make overload even more overloaded? Take more risks. Just go for it, lads. Come on. I don't understand. We've We were such an attacking force for so long. We sign a whole load of new players and suddenly we can go an entire match and not have a shot on target. I just I just don't get it. Is this what messing around with tactics does? It ruins our awesome attacking, overloading football that we were doing before. Because if so, I want to go back to that and forget this tactical nonsense. Ugh. As much as I dislike it, back to the counter-attacking for a away game against Derby. Um, so, Foot comes in on the left wing at the expense of Tardy, drops down to the bench. Diaby also comes back in as well. Arn's going to be the holding midfield player in the absence of Clement. And Tommy Duxbury is going to come into the midfield to replace the suspended Enzo. Mutcher comes back in at right back as well because we need him. I don't. I, I'm not playing him in the last game. Was well, silly. We've made one quite te one tweak to this tactic. We're going to play Alston as his preferred attacking forward. Um, or advanced forward or whatever it's called rather than a complete forward. We need to find a way to get this man scoring goals and that's the position he wants to be playing in. So maybe he'll score a goal doing that. My theory in doing that is it's he's less likely to be isolated because we've got Mark Foot playing as an inside forward rather than having um, a winger out there. So we're going to have Foot doing a little bit more of the work that we would have expected Alston to do as a complete forward. So there is some logic to it. It's not just randomly changing player instructions to suit their preferences because we've had a few chats in the comments about that over the last couple of weeks and how I'm more interested in getting the players to play my way than changing the team all the time to suit the players. But I think with the injury and with the lack of goals and with foot coming in, we've got three good reasons to tweak the instruction there so that's what we'll do and we'll see if it makes a little bit of a difference Alston picks up the ball very deep again has a shot from range at least he's had a shot and we're the first team to get a shot on the board today it would be nice if we could have a shot on target look at the difference that result against Norwich last week has made as well because we've gone from us being able to challenge for a European spot and Norwich being potentially in a relegation mess to Norwich are above us in the league. It's, it's as simple as that. The Premier League is so tight at the moment that a couple of results one way or the other and you're at completely the opposite end of the league to what you were before. That's why it's so important that we don't lose today. But we find ourselves 1-0 down away against Derby. Derby are a team who are another one who are sort of mid-table scrappers like we are. Ideally a team that we don't want to lose to. But 
we, we are struggling a little bit to play as well as we're capable of at the moment. And Foot gets in and we've finally had a shot on target. Oh, we'd already had one before that as well. A goal would be nice at some point, though. It's been a while since we've scored a goal, at least a meaningful goal. We got a couple of consolation goals against Man City, but I think we're already like 4-0 down by the time they went in. We're getting a bit desperate when Tommy Duxbury needs to be back in the team as well. Mm, I am I am feeling a little less positive about the shape of this season than I was at the start of this episode. Back-to-back -back defeats, we'll do that to you, and it's three defeats on the trot in the league. Alston's been trash again, Todd comes on. In fact, we probably should make a second substitution as well. Mark Foote, not capable of playing as a winger in the Premier League. Why haven't I got Gilbert on the bench? Can ZRB go out there? No. Um, I don't know what to do. Martins can play left midfield. Can he play there? No. Jack Beal can play right wing. Gran can play right wing. Otterson can play right wing. Rick Lang, can he play there? No. Well, this is silly. This is really silly. What an oversight on my part. Let's just bring Otteson on and make him a playmaker, maybe. So he can drift around a little bit. Can we have a Trequatista out there? We can't. Playmaker, hopefully we'll drift around a little bit. And Ugh. We... I don't know why I've not got Gilbert on the bench. 17 seasons in and I'm still letting the assistant manager pick the substitutes and it leaves me in messes like this. Diaby's not playing well either. We may as well bring on Jack Beal and go to this. I mean, we've seen these two. Why are we messing around fiddling? Why don't we just do that? And that is then exactly the combination of players in the right positions that we're looking for. Let's go and have an equaliser. For goodness sake, I want, can't have an episode where we don't score a goal at all. What happened to a free-scoring Ipswich? Park with the free kick straight into the wall. We thought we'd found a free kick specialist with him. Now he can't even beat a wall. It's all going wrong and they've got a player in our half with none of, none of us in said half with them. We're 2-0 down. It, I mean, it was just so poor. So poor to be caught like that. Oh, I don't have the words. Menzi could have put that ball anywhere other than straight back into the path of the only Derby player in the penalty area. But that's exactly what he did. And this this is we've been really awful this episode. We have not played well at all in either of these games. And this is the worst I've seen this Ipswich team play since the season we got relegated from the championship. I know we had some dodgy times last year, but we were always in games. We were just out outclassed sometimes but we were at least making games competitive these last three appearance these last three games now we have not looked like a premier league side at all and it's a worry we need to sort it out well, i don't know if i know how if you enjoyed that please make sure you pop a like on there for me subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and thank you very much for watching